This is Whispering Adirondacks Radio. This time on Whispering Adirondacks Radio, we sit down with longtime resident and dedicated community volunteer Don Morrison, who has lived in Jay, New York for over 45 years with his wife Connie. Together, they talk about their years in town, where they grew up, and how they started volunteering in the community and on the J Village Green. This interview is a multi-part series which we will upload a new broadcast every two weeks in the spring of 2023. In part three with the interview with Don Morrison, we dig even deeper into the history and we have a deep discussion about the iconic, historic, and pillar of the village center, the bandstand. Quotes from news clippings, historical quotes, and important documentation and understanding of the importance of the structure, and why it should be kept and preserved. Stay tuned for Part 4, coming up in two weeks, here on Whispering Adirondacks Radio. Well, um, let's talk about the bandstand some more. Um, And I know that uh, this this is going to be a little bit long-winded, but it's the history of what I can find on the bandstand. And there's actually a couple different stories, but from reading uh, the article from 1976 that Miss um, Smith had wrote, and Miss or Miss Mrs. Smith, Mrs. Mrs. Um, that Mrs. Smith wrote. Um, I also found two different articles from the current town historian Sharon Houston. And Sharon quotes the previous town historian, Mary Wallace, in with some of this information. And some of it's quite fascinating. Some of it was like very eye-opening to, to learn because without these facts, you, you don't know how to proceed sometimes with, with a piece of history. Um, and so I'll read what I have here and then I'll open it up for you to, to make comment on what you think and what you think should happen. Um, According to the current town historian Sharon Houston, she has two articles wrote from the year 2020 on her history page on Facebook. One story, non-confirmed, was the bandstand was built in honor of a gentleman named Henry K. Brown, who was the leader of the J. Brass Band in the 1800s. Henry Brown passed away in 1913, though. This information seems that it can't be confirmed that it was built in his memory. Um, Doing our own research, we found a newspaper clipping wrote by Adeline R. Smith at the Wells Memorial Library Archives stating that a gentleman by the name of Ned O'Connor, a former English soldier, trained his cadets on the Village Green, presuming these to be the Minutemen, as they stored their guns at the old Baptist church house, which still stands today, but in terrible condition on the corner of Route 9N and 86 and J. And that while they trained in the 1800s, they trained to the music of the brass band playing, which would signify that the bandstand was in place then. The second story, which previous town historian Mary Wallace speaks of the Bruce family and their tragic loss of their five-year-old son from drowning in the east branch of the Osable River. Sharon's research led her to find a possible name for the boy, L.D. Bruce, and his parents, Jonah Bruce and Esther Coonrod Bruce, who lived in the Jay Hamlet. Uh, The young boy passed away April 24th of 1853 at the age of five. Mary Wallace, per current historian Sharon, says in her post that there was a poem wrote about the boy and it confirms the situation. Uh, Long story short, according to Mary and Sharon's research, the boy's parents built the bandstand after his death in the mid-1800s. Historical pictures of the bandstand can be seen showing it on the park for well over 130 years. In the exact same place and placement, it sits today. The first time the bandstand came into trouble and its fate 
came in was 1976, according to Adeline's news article. Replacement, or torn down, due to age. We couldn't find an update from 1976, but the bandstand is still here today, so we must go on the idea that the town approved to keep it then. But you added to that story when we first started the interview that maybe you had a hand in getting that ball rolling as well. After about 20 years, Mary Wallace, then historian, had to support the bandstand's fate in a town board meeting by some people in town wanting to move it or replace it for a music stage. Which in the end, Mary proved the importance of its location and position, and it remained in place. We here at Whispering Adirondacks Radio had spoken to a few people in regard to this, there is no detailed mentionings about the importance of the placement per Mary. But if the bandstand was built in memory of the boy, he drowned in the Ah Sable River, which is very close to the park. The opening of the bandstand, where you can walk in, exactly faces the river, perhaps a hidden sign or gesture to the boy, pointing to the reason and importance of its construction. Recently, with your retirement, Don, there has been chatter for a few years, too now, from new residents in town, that these new residents want to destroy the bandstand and build yet again a music stage for the Village Green. Not knowing the history of the bandstand, or maybe not caring about the history, wouldn't it be simpler to just build a flat, open platform around the south side of the historic bandstand for open music? They can't perform if it rains, so they utilize the huge theater just 75 feet away from the bandstand for bad weather because no one can sit and watch in the rain anyway. Uh, perhaps GEMS, which is the J Entertainment and Music Society, could build an outside stage on their remaining property to the left of their building and people could sit around the bandstand and watch the music from the park. What would be your suggestions going forward with this historic and meaningful structure? Yeah. We've just uh, talked a little bit, asked questions about you know what they have in mind, and um, talked to some of the board members and some of the uh, gems people and so forth. They, there are a lot of different thoughts out there. And one was to go to the other end of the park, uh, up the McDonald's store and put a uh, put a performance stage there where the flag is yeah where the flag is and I, I guess that's probably a good idea and and I think whatever if Jens wanted to do something in their property that that would be fine um, uh, they they do need something and I hope I, I'm sure they're going to spend a lot of time on this before they ever come down to work what are we going to do or if we're going to do anything but I'm all for for them doing something for, for that because the bandstand really is too too small for the groups now that come in there and uh, but should we destroy the bandstand no for that purpose? there's no reason why they can't keep the bandstand right where it is and if they wanted to go to the other end of the park and put a performance stage that would be just fine they could even build one around the bandstand if they wanted to. They could like, do lots of different things. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of... Um, th there was a period in the 70s when older kids w were sitting in the bandstand day and night, practically, because the, the, the around the top of the bandstand uh, where, where you could sit was like a 2 by 6 or 2 by 8 board in there all the way around it and so they could sit on it and they would sit there for hours and they, they weren't always exactly kind to the bandstand so I said well there's nothing we can't fix so I went down and uh, I built that railing that goes around there now which is just a two by four um, is not conducive to sitting on so I put all those little posts in all the way around, cut those and put that in, and then I cut a two by four to go around. So what that railing is now 
where they used to sit is now a two by four. Wow, that didn't go over very well with the group that used to sit there. Finally, one of them came to me and said, I know why you put that. You put that up there just so we can't sit on it. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> but, but you were trying to protect the... So we protected the, the, the top of that. And, and they, would, they would sit there just like day and night. I mean, just forever. And, and like I said, they, were all, they, they weren't always really kind to the place. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, and then, then the floor, I put a new floor in that too. I built a floor to, to go in there to, to make it look a little nicer. So it, there's, there's been a lot of hard work and uh, care put into the bandstand over the, over the I, years. I think so. I think by, I, by, by you, but also by other, by other town residents. Yeah, yes. Matt Stanley, who now is the current Town of Jay supervisor, was quoted with us back in 2021 uh, when running for the town supervisor's position, uh, responded to the question about the bandstand, uh, and the question was town history and assets. In a short as answer as possible, give us a quick response to your thoughts on each item and how they should be preserved, helped, demolished, or replaced. And we asked Jay Village Bandstand. And his response was one word, and it was kept. Yeah, good. Yes, they have. They have. From what I heard, they have said we're keeping that there. We're not. We're not tearing it down. And and we asked him a further question about the bandstand. Should it be restored, if it needs restoring? And his response was, "These are things that are historic in the town of Jay. The covered bridge is our icon." the town green and the bandstand in the town green. Small town America has that and we need that because that's what defines us. What's your hope going forward, Don, that the town board and the parks committee and the new and old residences will do with the bandstand and the park as a whole? Well, uh, on, on the bandstand, they need to keep it pretty much like it is and it, it needs a new uh, cedar roof. Uh, on it, and that that should be done. Um, and in terms of, I I hope they, I I, I kind of go toward a committee sort of thing that would take over the upkeep of the, the entire green, and they would decide what kinds of things we want out there. Do we want a couple more tables out there? Do we want a couple more chairs out there? Do we want to? So you yeah. think maybe there should be a, a small committee separate from the parks committee that just concentrates on the village green? Is that is that your idea? Yeah, it could go that way. It wouldn't matter how that went, but but it needs to be a working committee. It can't be a committee. Oh, it can't be a committee that says well, we just need this. Let's hire somebody. You know, let's get the town to hire somebody to do this. It would be better if the committee did the work themselves themselves hands on so they had ownership to it yeah and to me that always works out the best Be because when when they put a thought process into it then they have to implement the the process that they that they right. want yeah it's just good good thoughts on all of it um every season holiday and celebration you have made sure that the park was decorated well maintained lights working flowers, and grounds kept up and presentable. Now with your retirement from the official park caretaker, do you hope that the Parks Committee can find a new person to carry on the traditions you started? Which basically you just answered That's that. That's right, right. And, yeah. and I think you answered it very well because... That's that's what they need. They they need someone to take over what you've done over the last 30 plus right. years. And take over. They're going to have to do it this year. I mean, they're going to have to start off. They're going to have to figure out what they're going to do, and then they have now until spring basically to to try and get a group together to get, to, to, do, to, to do something. However, they however they're going to do it. Yeah, to to continue to to continue keeping it. Just continue. Yeah. Yeah. Do the flag thing. I've I've given everything that I've ever purchased for it. I've given to them all the flags. We, we, uh, we have eleven flags. And every major holiday, I go around and put put those flags up all all around the place. I'd like to see them keep that up. Mm -hmm. Those kind of simple things. Yeah, like they they put the reindeer. You put the reindeer up around 
for the, the lights for Christmas. And I did that right up until park. this year, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, you normally do pumpkins and hay Pump and stuff for, <laughs> yeah. the, for the Halloween. Um, Fourth of July, you do the flags. He's got your number. <laughs> keep the, yeah, keep the... um, and it, it really, you know, it's, the park just doesn't reflect, um, I, I guess the park really doesn't, I don't know how to say this, the park does more than give the, the people that live here entertainment because people that are traveling through to Lake Placid, coming and going, um, they get to see that park and see how right. welcoming it is and it shows how much that the town, you know, cares for its community. And whether it's been a small handful of people that have maintained the park and keeping it nice all these years, it still makes, it still gives us a representation when they drive through because they go, oh, look how nice it is. You know, maybe they'll stop on their way back um, at one of the small stores or something. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's an iconic piece of our town that's been there since the beginning. And, yeah, it's fell into repair a few times, but it's, it's nice now and we want to keep it nice and we want to make sure that everything that's there we preserve and we look after the way it should be. I can confirm what you're saying. We were taking that driving course every three years and we were in Plattsburgh for the course and the, we spoke to the, the, we talked to the man that was teaching it and he said, well, where are you from? And we said, well, we're from Jay. And he said, oh, Jay, he said, I love Jay. He said, you come down that hill from Wilmington and there's that beautiful village green in front of you and it never fails to make me feel good. Now, what could be better than that? That's the best feedback you could ask it for. Is. It really is. Because yeah. it's someone that you didn't say anything about that you two volunteer on the, no, on the village green or nothing. Not. He just voluntarily said how he felt about it, which is great. Right, it came out, he, it was like that, just as you're saying, that's indicative of the people that we are. And when you drive down there and you see it's, the flowers are blooming, the grass is all mowed, you know, and everything looks so nice. People are sitting around in their chairs reading their paper or something. It's, uh, it's a lovely, uh, where Heather lives in uh, Massachusetts, there's a huge park there. And maybe we don't go at the most opportune times, but a lot of times there's people walking their dogs there and that, which bothers me when they leave their extra things in the park. <laughs> Seems like there's other places they could go, but there's no pretty chairs, there's no uh, pretty decorations in that park in Massachusetts, and it's a big, big area that um, it, it, it's, there are it's people cold, there, it's not warming. but there's no, no really, nothing pretty, you yeah. know, which is quite a comparison to this one. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, like you said, the chairs add color, it adds warmth. The bandstand is iconic. It's, it's America. It's, it's, it's what has been here since the town was almost founded. It's been here almost as long as the covered bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, and it, it's just something that we all love because we see it every day and we appreciate it and, and that's yeah. what we like about it. It's, it's there and it's there for us to use and enjoy and right. not like you said, not everywhere has something so welcoming and warming like, like what we have, so it's nice. Stay tuned for part four coming up in two weeks here on Whispering Adirondacks Radio.